Good morning, Amarada. Sharon. Hey, good to see you. Thank you for joining us today. We'll start here in a few minutes. Will a few more people catch on? Somebody else is coming. Hey, Luna. I have my two, two little children out here this morning, my two little doggies. <laughs> good morning, everyone. So good to see y'all. So good to have you out here this morning. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. It's Stephanie. Good to have you. Mary. Hey, Mary. Stephanie. Hey. Yes. Hey, Yvonne. Good to have you this morning. doggies are out running around so hopefully they'll behave <laughs> like a dog I hope you ladies are all doing well and you've had a good week productive prosperous I've had a good week got a lot done at my little salon what time is it? Is it time for us to start? A few more minutes. Let some more people get on. I got out here just a little bit early. I got out here and I'm drinking my coffee. My can of lilies over here just bloomed. They just bloomed yesterday cause, or last night because they weren't yesterday. But let a couple more people get out here. Luna. Still waking up. And I know it's not all that early on the East Coast, but I'm still a little sleepy. We bought some rugs for the salon, but we had to put a couple, in, and we did it late last night and moved some stuff around and um, worked in the vault, which is an old bank, and I'm turning that into like an aesthetician's room. And I had some work to do in there. Good morning, Stephanie. I'm glad to see the weekend, yeah. I know it. It just goes too fast, Stephanie. It's like I get excited Friday night, and then next thing you know, it's Monday morning again. <laughs> uh, well, but it's, um, it's an overcast here in the Carolinas, and the temperature is really, really good. I don't know. It must be in the 60s. Maybe it's the highest. It's warm, warm enough, but there's a cool breeze blowing this morning, so it's really nice. Where you got? Where are you all hailing from? What area of the country are you joining me from? Are you on the East Coast? Central Time, Mountain Time? Hmm. It would be early Mountain Time. Missouri. Well, hello, Missouri. <laughs> Let's see. A few more minutes and we'll get going. Rain in Wisconsin. 
And we need rain too. Central Illinois, Central Time. So it's seven thirty your time, Yvonne. Okay. Wisconsin. What is it cool in Wisconsin, Mary? This time of the year. I guess. I guess y'all having your summer's probably about like ours. So. You um. Guess you're not too far. I guess depending on where you're at, in Wisconsin from the Great Lakes. Up that way, it probably gets really, really chilly in the winter. <laughs> so, I'm sure it gets really chilly for me. <laughs> hey, we just went to Colorado recently, and it snowed at the end of May. It snowed, good snow, probably about a foot. And I think that's the most snow I've ever seen in my life. Because uh, we do not get snows here. Uh, maybe one, a good one maybe every maybe three years, maybe four years. But a good one here is maybe like four inches. So just enough to cover. So. I can't imagine what it would be like to walk outside. And my aunt lives in, uh, she lives in Michigan. And uh, I think they've totally been snowed under where they had to dig their way, dig a tunnel out of the house <laughs> to go outside. I just can't imagine even just having, even having a foot of snow like we saw in Colorado was kind of nice. It's beautiful. So today is just a social meetup. We just meet and we talk. So I would love to hear what you guys, um, what you did this week. Down in the left corner. Okay. Got you, Mary. I bet it's beautiful over there. I bet it's pretty country. So we just talked this morning. Uh, we did have our live on Tuesday, so catch up with those whenever you can but we did it on dreams actual dreams <laughs> like when you dream at night and we talked about that and we had some really interesting conversations about uh, what dreams mean so what we really were um, I guess the whole the reason for it was that dreams really do have meanings and we should pay more attention to them, just not take them so literal, because typically they are symbolic, and um, that's what we talked about. We discussed it and just shared different people, shared different things. So I would imagine once a person becomes more interested in their dreams and begins to write them down, study them a little bit, your dreams usually increase. So. Hey, behave, y'all behave. Behave. So, well, today, I am heading back to the salon to put up some mirrors. I've got some very large mirrors that have to go up. And putting my husband is actually putting those up. I'll just be assisting. We're going to work out this morning. I'm going to exercise this morning. And at our gym, we have... Um, we, we do CrossFit in our gym. We've got a very large event coming up. So the owner bought a, one of those very large fans. So my husband's gonna help him get that big ceiling fan. And it's, it's really, it's like a massive fan. It's going up today. So I don't think I'll be helping too much. I'll be watching. <laughs> I, I may go be, uh, be the food runner or something. So he worked all week. Oh, summer school. Hiking. Oh, good for you, Stephanie. Oh, it gets too humid. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's already humid here. It's, uh, sometimes uh, in the morning when I walk outside, it's like going out. It's like going into, not a steam room exactly, but it feels steamy already. And early, that's early in the morning sometimes. So, but hiking sounds great. I do love to hike. We are uh, planning a little trip. We're very near the mountains. They're maybe about two hours. And the mountains in the south, they're different, of course, than the ones out west. Our mountains are more like big hills that just roll. But they do have a lot of rocks in them. Sorry for the interruption. And you know, Roxy. And they have some beautiful trails, beautiful waterfalls. So we're going to do some hiking this fall when the gets cooler and the leaves turn 
and we can hike around and we're going to find those waterfalls. There's a waterfall trail that you can take around here. So, hey, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's always an adventure. <laughs> it's always an adventure out here. So, so I love to hike and I enjoy being out in nature. So, behave. You behave. Behave. Good girl. Oh gosh. They are playing. Hey. Hey. That's enough. Hey, y'all. All right. Pause. Hey. Get yourself in here. You get over here. Get over here. You know what? It's like having little kids, isn't it? <laughs> it's like they know, like when you're on the phone or something and they're over showing <laughs> and they're showing out. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. Uh, they just want to get your attention somehow, some way. But today, uh, around me, would be a great day to do some hiking. I am, I'm not but about maybe 10 minutes from some, hey, Eileen, so good to have you. Good to see you again. Thank you for joining us. I know you're on, I think, California time, so thank you for getting up so early. I appreciate you. But we're near, um, there's, a, there's some horseback riding trails and mountain biking trails that are near us. They're like, it's about a 10 minute drive. So we drive, we take our little Jeep. We have an older Jeep and we just take it and ride around through the dirt roads. <laughs> that's, our, that's our fun. But we found out there is a, um, there's a stable not too far from one of those trailheads and we may rent some horses and go horseback riding one day and just kind of check them out. So it's a lot of fun. We love to horseback ride. We have even considered having a horse. I think we're going to do some trail riding first and just see, just see how that goes. I mean, that might be the answer if we can just every once in a while come down there and love on somebody else's horses, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we'll see. My daughter is so, she's getting excited, so she's wanting a horse. And I don't blame her, I don't blame her. I like horses too, but. Y'all got any uh, special plans this evening? Since it is a Saturday night, anything fun? Anybody going to any sort of an event? Oh, that'd be great, Stephanie. You know what, a lot of these staples too, Stephanie, these um, horses that they have, they're good horses to ride, very gentle. I just rode in Colorado and um, those horses, you could just about ride bareback without a bridle even. I mean, they were just so easy. But yeah, they had good spirit about them, so. I like them to have a little pep. We don't want them to run to the barn, do we? Every time you get on them, I've ridden horses like that too. So, yeah, take them riding. Just take them sometimes out for a drive. They probably like that. Just really, we just have to get our kids off of their phones. You know, <laughs> I mean, if with me, it's kids, I guess. With some, it's grandkids, but just get them outside. And I mean, there's so much to enjoy out here. So uh, my daughter and I are making, um, we're making like an Afghan. We're hand knitting it. If you've if you've uh, never tried that, just try that. It is, to me, it's a lot of fun. It goes really fast. You can buy your yarn very inexpensively from somewhere like Hobby Lobby. You can order it online too, but it's like big, thick yarn. And uh, anyway, I told her yesterday, I said, you need to finish your Afghan that you were making. Cause she said, I don't feel good, but she's been sitting around since she graduated. And that's why we all feel, we feel kind of yucky when we don't do anything. So, um, I bought me some more yarn. I'm gonna make me another one too. I have one I've made and I'm gonna make another one. But uh, it's, I'm not a great hand knitter, if that's what you wanna call it, but I do well enough to get it done and there's not too many people gonna be examining my work anyway. 
it's I just use it to lounge around with and but it feels so good and it's heavy so I love it so but yeah riding it would be fun Stephanie there's so many things just get into the car roll the windows down I used to take my kids uh, like strawberry picking take them to get strawberries and you know you only can entertain for just a little bit of time yeah yeah that'll be great well if they're young it won't matter then that's the good thing about it <laughs> you, you can just barely do anything to their little rod and reel whatever <laughs> and just let them stand out there and play but yeah it could be an adventure depending on what kind of hooks you put on there i guess but <laughs> yeah that'll be fun though i like to fish my um uh, my brother-in-law is an avid fisherman he's really good at um, going to the lake and knowing where the fish are and he does all kinds of different fishing Eileen, it is, um, you do it without needles. You only do it with your hands, with your fingers. And the thread's very thick. It's very, I say thick. I mean, it's about, I guess it's about as big around, maybe bigger than my finger. So it's very large yarn. So it's easy to just do it. There are some videos on YouTube. There's, uh, let's see. The one I followed is Play Hooky with me, and she does a lot of hand knitting, and that's the one I followed her on the blanket, but I just, I did, I put the YouTube video on the TV, and then I just did it, so yeah, you would like that, and you're kind of an artistic person anyway, Eileen, so I think you would enjoy that. To do something with our hands, and to have something to look at that we've created, it's a good feeling, it's a good feeling for me. I'm. Uh, I, my grandmother was, a, uh, I would say, almost like a professional in her needlework. She did all kinds of embroidery. She could embroidery beautifully. She could applique. She could sew, and she could quilt. And she knit and crocheted. She did all of that. And she crocheted with, I mean, speaking of needles, remember the little crochet needles, the little tiny ones that look like a needle? They're so fine. And the little... The little thread, she crocheted with that. I, it was amazing to me that somebody would have the patience to crochet that type because it takes so much time, but she was very good. But her quilting was beautiful. She'd piece everything together, scraps, because she came up through the Depression, so she didn't throw anything away. So all her uh, scraps from sewing, she'd piece, and she'd make a quilt, and then she'd hand quilt it down. Now, if you've never done any hand quilting, it's very challenging. Very, and I, I mean, when I run across some old quilts and look at the handwork, it's, you can appreciate what they've done. It is like a dying art, just about. Yeah, try Yvonne. I, if you like to, uh, if you like blankets, if you want a soft, fuzzy blanket, um, they'll tell you in that play hooky with me. They'll tell you in the video. Um, I try to remember to put that up on Amarada that video they'll tell you what type of yarn to get but you could go out today and get it probably at Walmart um, Hobby Lobby around here I'm not sure in your areas what y'all have as far as craft stores but you can go as cheap or as expensive as you want to with the yarn I went just with the cheap regulars it's not chenille the chenille would be nice too but this was just a fluffy cotton polyester blend but it was it's really uh, it really makes up beautifully. You crochet. Yeah. Yeah, I can crochet too. I haven't done that in a while. And I can knit too with the needles. I can do all that with the needles. But you're right. When you ha when you knit with those needles, that is, um, what's the word? It takes a little expertise. <laughs> Don't drop a loop. <laughs> hey. That, that reminds me to tell y'all, when you do this, those of you who want to do this, um, make sure that when you're doing this hand knitting, Gina Lynn, make sure that when you do it, you're checking the back side to make sure you hadn't dropped a loop because you're truly, I don't know how far I had went, I had almost finished, 
I flipped that thing over and I had dropped the loop. So basically, I missed one and one of the threads was a big loop on the back that had to be pulled out and uh, redone. But you know what? After I had been doing it, after you get into the rhythm of it, it goes so fast. You really can do somebody. Hey, Kathy. So glad you're here, Kathy. After you get into the rhythm of doing it, you could do it in probably about like three hours of just sitting there watching TV because it's such big threads and you're making bigger loops. It goes really, really quick. So I guess that's why I like it because it goes fast and you can see what you've done. Hey, I'm glad you're here, Kathy. And Gina, we're talking about uh, hand knitting or finger knitting. They call it different things, but there's a video out there on YouTube. It's Play Hooky With Me. And um, Isabella and I, my daughter, we bought some of that yarn from like, from, for us, it's Hobby Lobby. Big, it's big, thick yarn, big, soft, fluffy. And we made a little afghan. So she's making one that's kind of a cinnamon orange. And mine is kind of an, uh, a beautiful purple. It's um, a purple with a little brown in it. So it's a little muted, it's really pretty. Well, you have to try it with the cat. I did it myself, and I bought me some more yarn. Um, my husband said he likes the purple one, so I'm gonna make me another one that's kind of um, kind of between a green and a blue. It's a light color. It's not mint, but it is a soft, um, dirty green kind of color. I don't know how to explain. It. I'm not sure what that color would be. It's not sage. It's not like not army sage. It's it's still a different tone, but it's kind of between a baby blue and some sort of a dirty green. Hey, Angela. So good to have you out here. Hey, we're just talking. We're just sharing. But anyway, I had my daughter and told her she needed to be doing something and finish her little afghan. It's been sitting in there for months. I finished mine. She hadn't finished hers. So she, uh, she's just about got it done, except she found she dropped the loop on the back. So we're going to pull it out. Yes, it is a beautiful day, Angela. I'm doing great. Making my coffee. This is my cup that was made by my friend of, let's see, almost 50 years. We met when I was nine years old. And so I'm 50, I just turned 57. It's had a birthday a couple weeks back. Anyway, I was pregnant with one of my kids. I was very sick. And they, we were supposed to be meeting for my birthday. And uh, anyway, they went ahead and met, and they made me little gifts. And she, it's one of those paint paint plates where you do the ceramic stuff. So anyway, so I cherish this cup because it came from my friend. So, but we're just talking about finger knitting, hand knitting, and talking about horseback riding, and getting outside, fishing, doing some things outdoors. And we are going to do a waterfall in the, I guess it's in the Blue Ridge. They have a trail, not a trail, it's really a road. And on that highway, just a little two lane road, there are many, many waterfalls. I don't know exactly how many just in that area, but I'd say, I wanna say 30, 40, something like that. Some of them, you can just park a little bit and almost see them from the road. One of them you can, well, you used to be able to drive under. I think they've stopped that. It's called Bridal Veil Falls. You could drive under the falls. And uh, they stopped, they stopped you from being able to drive under, and I'm not sure why, but, but some of them are very accessible, and some of them you have to park and you have to hike maybe an hour to get to. So we're gonna head to the mountains in the fall around us since we're so close and just get out and do some waterfall trail, hunting, hiking, looking. <laughs> so <laughs> that'll be fun. But I'm so glad to have y'all. I hope that y'all have a beautiful day planned. I'm getting ready to go and work at CrossFit, group workout at CrossFit. I'm still, I guess you can tell, I'm still a little sleepy. We went to bed kind of late last night. We put a late nighter at the salon doing some work out there trying to get it up and going i got a lot accomplished this week didn't look like i was going to but i did get some more things done so my son i want to share this too my son is uh 
having surgery next week, so just kind of remember us when you think about us on Thursday. It's, uh, it's outpatient, but you know every mother, you know how you feel when you, your kids have to get things like that done. But uh, anyway, Kathy, pool day. Hey, that's a good day to have a pool day. Hope you've got some good little snacks. I guess little treats to hang out by the pool. To me, that's what makes it fun, all the little unhealthy snacks that <laughs> make it so good. <laughs> we were blessed when my children were small. We were blessed that we lived in a neighborhood that had a pool, and they even had a pool shack. And, and the pool shack was all the little drinks, little ice creams and everything that you could go and the kids could just go and get. And then we also had a little restaurant that for lunch during this, only during like the summer. I don't, well, I don't know if they had it on the weekends or not, but during the summer they had lunches and we could get like, I don't know about your kids, grandkids, but I mean, it's like chicken nuggets and fries. It's whatever, that's what they want to eat all the time. So we would, we would get those and just share those because the kids were little. But that is a great way to entertain the kids and it's, pretty healthy to get out there and swim. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. My son is, uh, both of my children are hearing impaired, and my daughter wears a hearing aid, which serves her well, but my son has a cochlear implant, and he's done wonderful with it, so he's got to have a new one. Hopefully your grandson, okay, it's five. He wants it so bad, <laughs> yeah. I know, and it's and it's something how they have all these little things that they want to do, and they feel so proud of themselves when they can do it. So let them encourage him, and if he doesn't do it, it's okay. You got time. You got the summer. By the summer, he'll probably be doing everything, and that's when they get scary <laughs> when they when they're running around doing everything. Stephanie, your son has a cochlear implant or is having surgery? I have to comment. My son is 23, so he got a little anxious when we found out that it had to be re it has having to be replaced because it's a defective part. So, uh, but you know what? God gave me that son, gave me that daughter, and he has a plan for them. And as my husband stated, he said he's going to take care. He's he gave us our children, and really, to some degree, he's responsible for them, too, so he loves them more than I do. Okay, Stephanie, that's great. He's 27. He's going to implant. Well, we did advanced bionics. I'm just curious what you did, because they were, we had a choice of three. My son's 23, so you're a little bit ahead of me. I don't know when you got your implant. He got his, but Seth was, um, he was 17 months old. So he was very young when he got it, and it was Advanced Bionics uh, Clarion is the one that they were doing <coughs> at the time, and it was a body-worn pack. He had the little thing that stuck sticks up here, and the little body-worn, little wire went down to a body-worn pack, but his speech is, is absolutely phenomenal. Really, most people don't even know he's hearing impaired. That's how good. But he was born profoundly deaf. And all that means is he can't, he can't really hear anything. Maybe on the level of a bomb. That's about where he, with his ears, with his natural ears. But now with the cochlear implant, he hears, he hears very well and he talks very well. He has a southern accent. So he's obviously hearing sounds extremely well. So... I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful for that technology and what it's meant. So, it's 6 a.m. All right, Eileen. Your tooth broke, too. Your grandmother's death. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Yeah. Nuggets. I'm reading, going back reading y'all's messages. Okay. Clarion, yeah. Yeah, I know it, Stephanie. I agree with you. When my son heard the birds, it, it scared him. And I remember 
he got real scared one day. We were going outside, and he was maybe getting close to two years old at this point. And he was hiding, he was burying his head in like my face and my hair. And I was like, what? What is going on? And it was the wind in the trees. He heard the leaves rustling. And I still remember that. I still get emotional because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, the things we take for granted. You know, the things we take for granted. Just the wind in the trees. It scared him. And I remember the birds too. That was two things in the very beginning that he did not like. So it's amazing. People think that when they get sound, how awesome and wonderful it is. But actually, it's the opposite. They don't like it. <laughs> they don't like it. All right, Kathy, you have a great day, too. I'm glad to have you out here. Mary, let's see. Spina bifida. Okay. I know somebody around me that's got uh, spina bifida. He's in a... I don't know about your son. I know it's probably different as far as what it causes. But thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And... I know you love your son, and I hope you have a wonderful day over there helping him. I tell you what, no matter how old our kids get, no matter how old we get, they're still our little babies, and we still love them, and my son is able to clean his apartment. Let me tell you, I want to go in there sometimes, and I want to clean it up. I can't help it. When I get in there, I start picking up cups. It's just a mother's instinct, isn't it? But you enjoy your time with your son, Maybe cook him maybe his favorite whatever it is that he likes. <laughs> I bet there's something that he likes. Let's see. I'm trying to read y'all's messages. Yeah. Yeah, it's clock. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, my children, um, they don't like clocks. So it's funny you bring that out. My daughter bought this little Parisian-looking clock she thought was beautiful. <laughs> she ended up getting rid of it. She says, I can hear that thing ticking. It drives me crazy. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we, hearing people have to put up with that stuff all the time. <laughs> but she, she didn't like it. So she either disabled or she's got it in her room, but it's not working. <laughs> it's not ticking. She don't like it. I think, I think, my goodness, we have to put up with this. We can't take our sound off or turn the volume down. But they can. So, just a unique set of uh, senses. But you're right, senses do change. Uh, light really is bothers them. They have to have it down a certain way. Gina. Okay, Gina, I will say a prayer for you. I'll say it right now. Dear Father, right now, I pray for Gina's son. I pray, Lord, that he gets help and that you... You put him in with the right people and he gets clean. And I pray you put the right people around him to mentor him. And thank you for what you're going to do, Lord, for Gina's son. And I speak it in Jesus' name. Amen. Swedish meatballs. Me too, y'all. I got to go exercise. I love y'all. And Gina, I'll be praying for your son. And y'all have a great day. It's so good to have everybody out here. It's a beautiful Saturday. So enjoy your day, whatever it is that you're doing. I pray that it's beautiful and blessed. Happy Saturday.